My daughter Shannon has been diagnosed, was diagnosed at six months of age with Phelan McDermid syndrome. It's the deletion of a portion of the 22nd chromosome. It was actually called deletion 22Q13 um, at the time of her diagnosis. And there were about 35 families in the world that knew about this. Um, and that was in the year 2000. At birth, Shannon had another condition that was unrelated and as a result, um, they did some genetic testing. So at six months, um, family members had an, an intervention and pointed out to me that my daughter should be rolling over and, and um, sitting up. We saw a developmental pediatrician and a neurologist and they suggested we have, quote, metabolic testing done. Um, when that came back, I really didn't know what they were testing for because I really didn't think about it or ask questions. And um, they said that they found a deletion of chromosome 22Q13. Um, at the time, the only information was on the foundation's website for the support group, and they just read off what they found. I could tell you where I was sitting on my front stoop and what I was wearing when it happened, um, and it just blew me away because six months before, we were told that um, there was all her chromosomes were there. Uh, we then went to the NIH for um, a geneticist, as opposed to the neurologist who had ordered the test. He um, did what I call an old-fashioned um, exam. He observed, he asked questions, um, and he started off his conclusion with very positive information. What a beautiful girl my daughter was, how lucky she was to have two loving parents, how fortunate she was to have um, two older brothers that loved her because when her parents were no longer around, they would need to take care of her because, in fact, she would never be able to take care of herself. And to hear that about a six-month-old child is just pretty devastating. And, um, but when I tell this story, I have to point out to people that for me personally, hearing the reality early on uh, was okay for us. Um, it kind of got us to get our ducks in a row and kind of know what our plan was going forward. Um, I think for some people though, hearing that that early um, could throw you into a pretty deep depression. And it could also inadvertently make you give up on your child. Currently, in uh, I guess this is year 2011, so um, it's 11 years since my daughter's diagnosis, we've gone from 35 families to close to 700. Um, and that's worldwide. So it's still a very rare disease, but the reason that it's uh, increased is because uh, more uh, children are being referred for genetic testing, and the genetic testing technology has gotten much better. And so they're finding smaller deletions, um, and consequently we're finding higher functioning kids. Um, but we don't have a great natural history on this syndrome because uh, most of our population is um, pre-puberty be because you couldn't have, if you were tested for this 15, 20 years ago, more than likely you would never have found it. So it's really important that we um, collect data and um, samples and really follow all of our families very closely. Um, through puberty and into adulthood because we found that there's some symptoms that are arising in the older um, cases um, that don't present in younger years. When we first got involved with the, the support group in 2006, there wasn't much um, talk about autism and Phelan McDermott syndrome except that under the characteristics it listed autistic-like uh, behavior. As time went on, as science got better, as research was done, it, we then changed the description to um, my daughter has autism as a result of having Phelan McDermott syndrome. Um, it would be like having autism as a result of Fragile X. Um, and what this allows us is allows us to be part of a bigger community. Um, and if everybody that had an autism um, diagnosis were genetically tested, our family's size, the, fa the size of our syndrome would not be close to 700. It would be thousands, possibly tens of thousands. But many people with an autism diagnosis are not, um, they're told they have autism, so why would you go shopping for yet another <laughs> disability? So they aren't um, referred to genetic testing. When people ask, why would I want this additional um, diagnosis, and it's really not an additional diagnosis, um, my answer is because we have a fantastic support group, and when you know that you're missing a specific piece of your chromosome, specifically 22Q13, um, you can get a lot of specific information um, that does not apply to the gigantic umbrella that we know as autism. So um, if you were to Google autism and support, you would be overwhelmed with the information. If you knew you had, your child had Phelan McDermott syndrome and you Googled that, then you would have very specific information.
the more I realize that it's vital and um, to research that um, people that are diagnosed with autism, whether they're children or adults, whether they were diagnosed yesterday or 20 years ago, that they be referred to genetic testing because um, if there is a genetic abnormality, it frees the family from this tremendous guilt trip that many families with an autism diagnosis are given. Um, you know, I ate something when I was pregnant, I lived near pollution, um, I vaccinated my child, and um, one of the greatest things that a geneticist said to me, um, the same NIH geneticist uh, that told me that Shannon had this, um, was that there was nothing I could have done, even if I tried to cause this deletion. Um, it was de novo, and he explained that, you know, there was nothing before, during, or after conception or birth that I could have done to stop this from happening. And that was a huge gift to me, and it's not a gift that parents of children with autism are given.